first Civ Dave. The imaginary unit you join when you become a civilian. First Civ Dave is the unit that anybody in any branch of the military gets to join as soon as they get out. It's the one unit that everyone can't wait to get to. It don't start until you get that DD-214, and after that, it's like a breath of fresh air, baby. You ain't even gotta do sit-ups anymore. It's a beautiful thing. You get about as pretty as me if you try hard. As soon as you join, that's the only unit you wanna go to. You spend all your life wanting to join the military, you join, as soon as you get to boot camp, you're like, what the fuck? First Civ Dev, you pretty much do whatever you want. Big green wheel. Turn me to subscribe to anything the military does to fuck you over. And let me just tell you, they gonna fuck you over. Fuck you right in the ass. They're gonna take it dry, sandpaper condom. Straight out of trash can stand, they don't give a fuck. No lube. Sorry, I know it's your day off and it's your child's quinceanera, but who fuck cares? Mission first. Your mom just died? Whatever, go to work. Your grandma's sick? Cool. Your kid? Lost? Missing in the middle of the woods with the LT? Go fuck yourself. Some of us are kinky weirdos. We like the big green. We get off on the arm and just <clears throat> shoves it right up there. That big old green weenie. Blue Falcon. Buddy fucker. Someone who fucks over their buddies, typically for their own gain. These are guys that rat fuck the MREs, throw you under a bus for that promotion, they show up 10, 15, 30, maybe 45 minutes to, you know, replace you for their shift. Some might not even show up at all. Every single time I go drinking with the MPs, they start feeding us drink after drink after drink, and they never get pulled over, but we do. I wonder who called that in. I wonder. These are the type of people that just takes every opportunity just to fuck you. Don't be that person. You're looking a little blue there, buddy. We see you, Blue Falcon. Go fuck yourself. Dependopotamus, a woman who feeds off the young and broke service members. So just like the book said, Dependopotamus is really a larger woman who's just preying on the weak. It's natural selection at that point. The service members that get stationed on their base are very desperate to get some pussy. Females take advantage of that and know how to play the system. These privates think they have game. And she'll reel them in with some pussy game and hooks them in with the ring. She gets them out of the barracks. They get basic housing allowance. He thinks he's doing great things. He comes home from a nine month deployment with two babies. By the time they know they're getting played, it is way too late. And that's what a dependent upon them is. This. A deployment 10. A male or female in the military who slowly becomes more attractive the longer you're in the field or on deployment. Now, when you're on a deployment, you might find yourself looking at somebody who's an easy three and a half on any day of the week. You go to the field for an extended period of time and you get very horny and very desperate and you're willing to fuck anything that moves. A couple months go by, a girl has no beauty routine, no weight loss program. Doesn't matter what she does, she just gets hotter. You throw one of the deployment goggles and in a matter of months, dime piece. Homie, that is a deployment 10. Go to the Jack Shack, beat your meat, and come right back. You'll see her with completely different eyes. Shit, look at me. Give it a matter of month, I might be a deployment 10. Five it. When you ain't fortunate enough to actually leave the five, so you end up spending your entire deployment there. Now, five it is a conjugation of the two words, five and hobbit. Five it. Unfortunate soul that gets to go downrange, thinking he's gonna kill, thinking she's gonna kill, do great things for America, but doesn't do shit. Basically, just hanging out, doing supply, doing radio work or some shit, but you ain't actually out there getting purple hearts, getting shot at. These are the dudes that. Never left the fob. They sit on the fob, literally a fobbit. There is no journey, there is no rain, there is a PX and a Burger King though. Fucking hate fobbits. Low key wanna be one though. I hear they get to have sex with women too. Damn that fobbit life. ID 10T form. The imaginary idiot form. Boots are told to find when they are being fucked. An imaginary form that you can find absolutely nowhere in the military. And they'll go look for it too. Idiots. It's the idiot form. There's all kinds of imaginary things in the United States military, such as this IDT idiot form. I'm not saying it's hazing, but it's a uh, training with a capital H. This can be found next to the grid squares, the Humvee keys, or morale. Things that don't exist. The ID10T form. IDT, ID10T form. 
Jack Shack. Jack off station off in the port shitter, off in upwards of 120 degrees in that bitch. You'll find Jack Shacks much like the one I'm in. A seven layer, three eighths inch plywood where you get to smell them. Man feces. It's normally the only place where you get any sort of privacy. You're either living in a tent or in a case bin surrounded by 50 other motherfuckers. You don't want to beat your meat in front of 50 dudes unless that's your thing. You grab your porn mag, you grab your porn videos, you come to a jack shack just like these and you beat your meat ferociously. Rumor has it that there's some people out there who can't even get hard unless they're smelling a room full of shit like this. You're so brainwashed to the fucking stench of shit, you get a boner when you pass by a public restroom. Yeah. Often you have a competition because you're competing on whether you can finish before you pass out from the heat. Matter of fact, I'm gonna need a minute. And that's the definition of a jack shack. Jack shack. Jody, the guy who fucks your significant other while you're deployed. In other words, the guy that takes care of your girlfriend when you're too busy. First time I heard that shit, I was in fucking boot camp, trying to fucking write a goddamn letter to my girl back home. They told me to stop because she was already getting fucked by Jody. And I was like, well, <laughs> I don't even know Jody, sir. I don't know a Jody. They explained it to me. He's like a brother to me, but then ends up actually fucking convincing your wife to empty your bank account, leave you without any furniture. By the time you come back home, you have no clue what the fuck happened because she changed your phone number and blocked you from all of your social media accounts. It happens to the best of us, right? You know what I'm saying? When people, they just be out there, you know, just to be fucking people's wives and shit and your girls and shit, you know what I'm saying? So that's just what they want to do, you know what I mean? These people have no goddamn respect. Don't get Jody. Don't be a Jody. Don't be all fucking motherfuckers that you ain't supposed to be fucking, bro. Libo, shortened version of liberty, more often used in a casual conversation. Uh, it's when you get 72 hours off, or 96, the three day, the four day weekend. It's that 72, it's that sweet 96, it's that freedom you get from the US military. Hey man, what are you gonna do on your Libo? Where are you going? Who are you gonna fuck? Shit like that. You can take off your slave suit, leave the base, and hope you don't get caught when you're 100% violating the UCMJ within five minutes of being released. Um, it's really good time to try to get those really good college frat boy drugs out of your system. So I've heard. Uh, get out there, fuck the world. Do things, go get some of that pussy. Some of that reach around. Libo. Emotional. A hypothetical situation or entity is used for training. So you're doing shit in theory. Notional equals in theory. In a notional peacetime environment, such things known as spicy pose are continuously under fire with notional ammunition. Say you're notionally gonna overtake a hill or you're notionally gonna assault the enemy. It's pretty much doing things theoretically but never taking action. And during a notional amount of training on a notional day of the week, I prefer being notionally shot so I can lay there for the rest of the notional day and not have to do a notional damn thing. Notional. Ninja punch. Another name for getting a non-judicial punishment. An army you may know this as uh, in Article 15. I, I got two of them motherfuckers, right? It's nothing crazy. Kind of like a very heavy-handed slap on the wrist. A little slap on the wrist. You can attribute it to maybe a misdemeanor. I, I can't trust motherfuckers that ain't got no damn NJP. You feel me? Can't be trusting people like that, man. Mm -mm. Disrespecting an officer, disrespecting an NCO, assault, DUI, you name it. It normally gets resolved through a non judicial punishment. That's not gonna stay with you forever, baby. <laughs> I managed to bounce back from two of them. They shouldn't have let me. <laughs> it's doable. You have nothing to worry about. Don't be scared. Like, what you just out here following the rules? What the? <laughs> okay, no. But if you walk up to somebody that maybe was a corporal one day and then the next, came back as a as a Lance Corporal, and you're like, hey, bro, what happened? He's like, dude, I got ninja punched. OFP. Own fucking program. Best program to be on. Let me tell you something right now. This is the best program to be on, okay? Your own. Your own. This is when uh, your buddy Jones is in the barracks playing Call of Duty. Meanwhile, the whole squad's out trying to do a police call. Someone asked, hey, uh, where's Sergeant Kinker? 
fucking know, man. I haven't seen him all goddamn week. Motherfucker's been OFP. Own fucking program. Synonyms for OFP are uh, skate, uh, sham shield, never at a working party. Where am I? I don't fucking know. Do you know? Hell no. Will you find out? Probably not. Where am I? Most likely dental. Fuck out of here. OFP. Own fucking world. Porter shitter art. A genre of art specific to military. From extensively detailed genitalia to cities being destroyed by Coxzilla. That's all this right here. Right? Look at this. You don't tell me that military service members were not creative. Straight artists don't got shit on the Porter Shitter art. Oh, you see this right here? Come here. It says come there. That's a little high. I probably, I probably wouldn't put it lower, but to each their own. Your mom sucks. Dick. I love cock. Wagner loves cock. Classic. Classic. He does love cock. That's all of the damn country. All of the world. Just gonna add a couple more pubes to this uh, nice lady right here. When the homie comes through, and he draws some titties? Yeah, we like a full bush. 80s porn star style. Beautiful. With one little nipple hair. Perfect, just like mine. Thank you. Pink mist. When you hit an enemy fighter with a bullet or explosive and they're instantly vaporized into a pink mist of blood and guts. Pretty much self-explanatory, right? Bullet hits here, and all of a sudden, pfft, it's the fucking 4th of July. It's that beautiful, beautiful red-pink splatter that lets you know you got your man. Well, I never know if I hit my target until I see that mist, and boy howdy, does it get everywhere. Pfft. It just is a cloud of blood and guts. It's like the first time you ever had a fun dip and you dropped it and the pouch just squirted out all that powder. Ultimately, the same feeling. On those ones, you actually don't have to go confirm your kill because we kind of know. They should make that a fucking flavor. Fuck tiger blood. For some reason, it kind of turns the rest of us on. Pink mist. Mm -hmm. Rat fuck. When you take bits and pieces of something instead of taking the whole damn thing. We've all rat fucked. This is that guy who gets to the good stuff right away and just raids everything. So it's when you're out in the field looking forward to that Chili Mac MRE and you get to it, you pull it open. All that's left is the plain crackers. Why not just take the Skittles out the fucking MRE? Who needs anything else? And just leave that trash to all those losers fucking pokes. Get to that Chili Mac first. So fuck everybody else. I'm gonna leave them with cheese spread and some shitty, weird, whatever wheat bread that shit was. That guy's got the M&Ms. That guy's got the jalapeno cheese spread. Rat fucks. I mean, your skills are pretty good. Rat fuck. Salt dog. One who's been around for a while on the floor is a lot. The only thing you need to know is that they've been around for a long time and they've been to a whole hell of a lot of places. Has all this knowledge, and he's just someone you look up to. You can see the salt in their eyebrows build up because they don't have time to take a shower. He's deployed and fought somewhere in like four different places. And then on top of that, he has all these other fucking regular deployments. And on top of that, he's been in fucking long ass time. The uniforms are about 50 shades lighter than the norm. And they're just mean motherfuckers. Cause these salt dogs ain't the ones you wanna fuck with. Don't fuck with them. Salt dog! Salty as hell, they wouldn't think twice. Don't look at him in the eye, you might catch a case yourself. They ain't got no damn patience. They have no more patience. They barely have any more brain. If they say something, you do it. Talk back, no, don't do that shit. You never know what's gonna happen. Bah, boom, now you're dead. Salt dog. <laughs> yeah. Silver bullet. This is the thermometer that Cormoran shove up your ass to get your core temperature when you pass out or become a heat casualty. If you're in a high intensity training environment, maybe you drank too much the night before and you didn't hydrate and you went down. So what do the docs do? They immediately run over to you, pull your pants down and shove that big, huge throbbing thermometer in your fucking asshole. This is the quickest way to get your core temperature because at that point, they want to make sure you're not cooking up your fucking insides and you survive and you can keep on going. The book actually has a very nice illustration 
uh, the Corman with the thermometer and the Marine very giddily waiting to get it up the ass. That's not really true. That is a Marine or a service member's worst fucking nightmare. That bitch is the kiss of death for your reputation because you'll never live that shit down. Now I heard from some docs that they'll tape the thermometer at the end of a dildo, of like a big veiny 20 inch black one, and then you're passed out, ass up, you don't know if you're gonna get help or a dildo shoved up your ass. It's usually just a tip, and if he's a good doc, he'll spit on it first, so good luck. They don't put any lube. They don't even give you a fucking warning. They just shove it in without any mercy and a sadistical fucking smile. I've never gotten one. I just want to clear that shit up because you'll never live that incident down. You could have the best insult, and some motherfucker was like, well, bitch, at least I didn't get the silver bullet. So do yourself a favor. Drink water. Take two ibuprofen, change your socks, and do not get a silver bullet. Next we have Skull Fuck. <laughs> Forcibly shove your dick down their throat while grabbing their head and going to town. Most often used as a figure of speech to imply how bad you want to destroy and degrade someone. Say someone fucks up, right? That, that's a term that you would use. You tell someone to do something, they deliberately don't listen. So now you have them up a little bit off the ground, maybe two inches or so by their neck, nothing crazy, right? Up against the wall, screaming at them. Towards the end of that ass chewing, you're gonna say, go fucking do what I said to do before I skull fuck you. That's, that's how you get shit done. In most extreme cases, fucking someone through their eye socket also applies. Now some things not listed here might be ear holes, no holes, and butt holes. You can skull fuck just about anything you can put your dick in. The idea is just putting your dick <clears throat> forcibly. Remember that, ain't nothing consensual about it. And I would say just wherever, you know what I mean? You can go in the ear, that's your, do it. Now I personally like to find the lowest ranking motherfucker into a room and skull fuck them into oblivion until they can't remember their own name. Just let them know, your dick is gonna go in them whether they like it or not. That's a lot, man, that's fucking crazy. We good? <laughs> Stolen Valor. Someone who poses as a former military or pretends to have earned awards they didn't earn. They're normally in malls trying to get the uh, veteran or military discount, usually around Memorial Day or Veterans Day. Um, and they're normally dressed in a very fucked up version of any of the branches dress uniforms or really fucked up uh, utility uniforms. Military, not military, we all know. Someone that's done something like this, right? Impersonating something. Telling like they fucking something that they're not. As far as the military goes, though, man, you can't be doing that shit. If you ain't, if you ain't fucking earning it, and you wearing the medals or the you know the ribbons or the uniform, whatever, and you didn't earn it, stolen valor. And they're really easy to spot. They're kind of nervous or they're kind of uneasy because they don't want to get caught. Now, if you interrogate them, they will instantly break under pressure. Say you see someone out in town, right? I'm walking. Ooh, ooh. Boom, I spot some dress blues. So I go up to the person, I talk to him. Hey, what's up, how you doing? When'd you join? Oh, I joined at this time. All right, went to Iraq, five, six, se 17 combat deployments. That's why I have this <clears throat> full bird here. Dude is obviously 17 years old. Look, man, if you want the respect and credibility of the military, just fucking sign up and do it. Don't be doing all this bitch shit trying to pretend something that you are. That'll get your ass whooped. <laughs> get your ass whooped. You will get absolutely fucking rammed by the military and veteran community if you're caught. Stolen Valor. Don't be fucking wearing shit or fucking pretending to be someone that you... That you're not. Wagner loves cock. Common graffiti found throughout Marine Corps bases because Wagner really does love cock. This describes, you know, all that graffiti at any, you know, port of shitter you find Marine Corps or Army base. It's been probably 30 or 40 years since this shit started and no one can really identify who Wagner is or ever was. You can find it anywhere from basic training, either of the recruit depots to 29 Palms to Camp Lejeune, Pendleton, any place that Marines have been on it, you can guarantee there's gonna be a Wagner love cock. Wagner loves cock. And right next to it, Bob Ross himself created this beautiful, juicy cock. It's just a myth that keeps going on and on and on as generations keep going through, and it's become a legend at this point. 
Nobody knows who Wagner really is. Mythical creature. And nobody really knows why he loves cock so much. But Wagner loves cock.